Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about some common patterns of the coldness and heat or the, the common cold and hot patterns. There are four common patterns regarding the chills and fever. Concurrence, chills and fever. Chills alone without fever. Fever alone without chills. And uh, an alternating chills and fever. So these four are actually the only situation that chills and fever can happen. So the first one, concurrence, chills and fever, means that in this situation, the patient manifests together with the chills and fever. The patient can feel the coldness and fever at the same time. Chills alone without fever and fever alone without chills. That's the patient only feels cold or only feel fever. And the alternating chills and fever is described the situation that the patient feel cold for a certain period and then followed by the fever. And then after the fever, it goes back to the chills again. So that's alternating of chills and fever. The first one, concurrent chills and fever. So in order to discuss the, the common patterns of chills and fever, we need to understand what's the cause or what's the pathogenesis of chills and fever or the aversion to cold, of intolerance to cold. What's the pathogenesis? What's the mechanism that from our theories, we understand that these symptoms, these manifestations. So for chills or for the cold feeding on, the, on top of our skin and fever, in our theories, we, are, we believe that it is the, the struggle between the pathogenic qi and antipathogenic qi, which means it's the struggle between the healthy qi and the pathogens, especially the exogenous pathogens. So that's the uh, external pathogens. And the pathogenic qi, the antipathogenic qi or your healthy qi when they fight with the pathogens in this situation we call defensive qi because that's the qi perform the the function of defense your the body defense against the against the pathogens so in this situation we think that is the Defensive qi struggle with the pathogens. That's why we call we feel the chills, and also because the if the patient suffer from the exogenous pathogens, the defensive qi will be limited under the skin. So the pathogen the defensive qi cannot move. On the skin, so that's in the under the skin. Then, in the other words, in other words, that's on top of a, on top of your skin. We 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 don't have enough defensive chi. We don't have enough chi. That's why you feel chills because you don't have chi or you don't have enough chi on top of, of your skin. And on the other hand, why we got fever? So that's the explanation of chills because because of the qi could not go to the superficial of the skin, and then the fever that's because of the healthy qi is limited within your body. So the stagnation when we explain the qi stagnation. We have the plan that once the qi stagnates, we will cause the heat, 
the internal heat, and that's where the fever comes from. So that's how we understand the chills and fever from the theory, the mechanism, the mechanism and the pathogenesis of these two manifestations. So the first concurrence of chills and fever, the patient may manifest as severe aversion to cold with mild fever. So in this in this situation, the patient can feel aversion to cold. So the patient will have a sensation of coldness, a cold feeling, and the fever might be mild fever which means the fever may be like under 38 degree or 38.5 degree. The fever is not severe. And in this, in this situation, because that the patient is suffered from wind cold patterns, wind cold superficial patterns. And the, the reason for this kind of manifestation is because of the cold the patient is attacked by the coldness, the cold pathogen. The cold pathogen will limit the defensive chi within the body. And then that's why the patient man, mainly manifests as aversion to cold. That's because of the defensive chi could not move to the superficial skin. So there's something internal and external. In this situation, the patient, the qi move stays in the body. The defensive qi supposed to move to the, superficial, to the superficial skin. But now because of the coldness, the healthy qi, the defensive qi is limited within the in the body. So that's why they feel a volume to cold. Next one, severe fever with a mild a volume to cold. In this situation, why the patient will have a severe fever is because the, the pathogen is different. So from the first situation, severe a volume to cold, the patient suffer from coldness the cold pathogen. The second one, the patient feels severe fever. So that's the high fever. In this situation, the patient is attacked by the, the, the pathogen of, of fire or of heat. So in this situation, the patient will have a high fever. And because of the pathogen is heat, the heat is young. So the heat will make the fever worse because the pathogen will increase the yang qi in the body, although it's pathogenic qi. It's the yang qi we don't need. It will cause the fever. And in this situation, the patient may feel mild aversion to cold. So they still have a feeling of, of coldness, but this does not severe. The last situation, mild fever with aversion to wind. Mild fever with aversion to wind, that's actually the situation the patient was attacked by the wind. This is also from exogenous pathogens. Because of the wind, the wind pathogen, also young pathogen, for young pathogen, the patient Especially in very early stage, the fever is still not severe. The aversion to cold is also not severe, which means the struggle between the defensive qi or the antipathogenic qi and the pathogens is not severe in the very early stage. As you can see from these three situations, all the po all the possible situation 
in clinics. That's also exactly why we need to inquire, we need to ask the patient, because we cannot think about the symptoms. We cannot think from, from your mind, from the theories, we cannot conclude to assert certain symptoms or certain manifestations for individual patients, because these, even the patient, if they feel chills and fever, it can be different situation. And from these different situation, we can conclude from different pathogens, such as the first one, if the patient suffer from severe aversion to cold, then we can think that the patient might suffer, might suffer from the pathogen of coldness. If the patient has severe fever, we might think about that the patient might suffer from the heat pathogen, especially for exogenous heat. So that's how we use, we see different symptoms. Then we conclude to different pathogens. Then our treatments will focus on the pathogens. So we don't really focus on the symptoms. We don't really focus on the, the coldness or the fever, but we rather focus on the pathogens. But how do we know the path pathogens? That's from the symptoms. That's exactly what we said in the previous video. We cannot see yin and yang, but we can see coldness and heat. We can see we can see the cold feeling, not not really see, but we can ask the patient whether the cold feeling or hot feeling that can represent yin or yang. So especially for the chills or aversion to cold, this kind of feeling. Traditionally, these are the very typical symptoms of the superficial patterns. So as we study the diagnostics, we will include some tones of the patterns that we're going to study in future. But now you will gradually you will hear some of the the, the patterns that is here we said whenever patient feel chills or whenever patient feel aversion to cold there is it, there is a superficial pattern so from this this description we also can see that the a superficial patterns a superficial pattern can present by chills, the chills feeding, or over into cold, even over into wind. So that can, that's that one of the most typical symptoms of the superficial pattern. From this, this is situation, the patient will feel over into cold and the fever. No matter how severe or, or how mild the fever is, the fever is the struggle between the antipathogenic qi and the path pathogenic qi. If they can present as a fever, it means, it means that the struggle, there is a struggle between the antipathogenic qi and pathogenic qi. So there will be struggle between each these two. In other words, it also can we can see that the both of these two kinds of qi is not weak. If they are weak, they won't be able to, to fight. So they're still strong. Both of them. The pathogens are not weak and your antipathogenic qi your healthy qi also no weak. So that's why they can struggle. And in, in the other situation, if a high fever patient and then the fever hasn't been treated well and after a long time, all of a sudden the fever relieves and everyone feels happy. But for this for in this situation, 
you need to be careful. Why for high fever patient and then all of all of a sudden the fever relieves the fever the time the body temperature goes back to normal. That's some that's sometimes can represent that the healthy qi or antipathogenic qi is weak. So that's the from these different symptoms we can these from these different symptoms we can conclude to the pathogenesis of the body, we can conclude the body constitution or the antipathogenic qi of the body. The second is the chills along with the fever. In this situation, the patient only feel chills, so they only feel a volume to cold. The aversion to cold in an acute condition, intolerance to of cold in a chronic condition. So these two, these two only describe that the situation that the patient feel cold, feel to have a sensation of coldness. Mostly, it happens. Or yang deficiency. So as we said, that the yang deficiency will cause will cause a relatively excess in that's from the intolerance intolerance of cold because of the yang deficiency. And also this yang deficiency, why we said it is more likely to happen in a chronic condition is because the chronic condition can consume the body yang qi, which will cause yang deficiency. And in this situation, the patient will feel cold, especially they feel cold feet or hands, or cold, cold limbs. Apart from the coldness, they have a pale face, pale tongue, or weak pulse, that's from the intolerance of cold condition in the chronic situation. Aversion to cold in an acute condition. This, this situation describes that the patient feel cold suddenly. So in acute stage. It's not in very it's not in a long course of a disease. The patient may also have cold lungs. The patient may have a nausea, nausea or cough, cold breathing, and the pulse may be tense. This happens to patients that attack by the coldness, especially for exogenous coldness. So as you can see from this tube. If a patient tells you that they feel cold, you need you need to ask how long have been feeling? How long have they feel? How long have they felt this kind of sensation? If for a long course, a long period, you might think about it is a chronic condition, then it, it is more likely to be young deficiency. If the feeding happens in acute condition, it only happens suddenly, and then you may think about the patient. It's possible to be attacked by the exogenous pathogen, especially for the from the exogenous coldness. So that's the situation of chills only. So in this in this situation, the, the patient don't have a fever. The patients don't have a fever. Why they don't have a fever? That's because of a yang deficiency. The antipathogenic qi is weak. So this qi could not fight with the pathogens. That's why there's no fever. 
or for the acute condition. If the pathogen is very severe or violent, that's the most situation. The pathogen will go to the internally, will cause internally coldness. That's why the patient will have nausea, poor appetite, diarrhea, cough. That's re these symptoms can reflect that's the coldness already affect the organs, which is which are the lung or the spleen and stomach. So these are the sec the second situation shows a lung. The third fever alone without coldness. In this, in this situation, the patient presents with fever only. So there are three different types. Persistent, high fever. In this situation, the patient manifests as high fever. Typically, the, the body temperature will be above 39 degrees. And this fever persistence, so if keep staying in high fever level, the patient only have the fever, the patient don't feel cold. More common situation, the patient also have a red face or the hot feeling in the face. The patient will feel thirsty. The patient may have sweat, severe sweat, or the Pulse may be big pulse. No. Why the patient will have thirsty? That's because in this situation, for persistent high fever, this kind of a manifestation, the patient is more likely to be attacked by excess by exogenous heat. So we cause excess yang in the body, excess yang pathogen in the body. The young pathogen, such as a fire, will consume the body fluid. That's why the patient will have thirsty. The young, why the patient will have red face? That's because of the young can improve the circulation. The heat can go to the upper part of your body. That's why, especially from the face, they manifest it as the, the color of redness, this can in, indicate the, the circulation of the, of the blood circulation that due to the excess fire. And also from severe sweating, why the patient will have a severe sweating? That's because of the fire, it is yang. Yang can consume the body fluids. The young pathogen also can open the pores, can cause sweating. So from here, we need to use our theories in the basic theory to explain these different manifestations. When we see different symptoms from the patient, we need to use the basic theories to explain these symptoms, that's how we understand the disease. So for a persistent high fever, same as the first situation, concurrent fever and chills. If the patient can manifest it as persistent high fever, which means that's the antipathogenic qi and pathogenic qi, both of them are strong. That's why they can have severe struggle, can manifest as persistent fever. The second is a mild fever or low grade fever. This kind of fever mostly presents with of the body temperature below 38 degree. Or the patient may feel fever but they, when you take the body temperature, the body temperature may be normal. And these kinds of situations, most of the situation, the patient 
may have a long-term fever, the cause of disease may be much may be much longer than the persistent fee high fever. And also the pathogenesis is more complicated than others, such as the patient may have the mild fever due to qi deficiency. The patient might have the mild fever due to yin deficiency. Also, the patient may have mild fever due to emotion stagnation, such as qi stagnation. So for these kinds of situations, for qi deficiency, the mild fever due to qi deficiency, the patient will present as mild fever and the fever may be aggravated after work. The patient may feel fatigue or short of breath. The mild fever due to indeficiency, the patient may present as the mild fever and also the hot feeling in the palms and under the soles. So this is our first time to mention the, the palms and the soles, this kind of hot sensation. This is a very typical manifestation of indeficiency. No matter with fever or other situation, the patient may have this kind of symptoms. The last is high dose fever. High dose fever is actually this this term is actually quite new and it might sound funny to you. Tidal fever. We use tidal. We actually just want to describe the fever that comes and goes similar to the tide in the ocean. It comes in certain times and it relieves. The fever as well, the patient may present with fever in certain time and the fever may be relieved automatically. For tidal fever, we can, from the clinic, you can see different kinds of fever, especially in the fever in the afternoon or at night. Also for this tidal fever, the patient may feel normal in general, but in certain time, they can present as the body temperature more than 37 degree. Also, this tidal fever can present as the patient have a mild fever, such as above 37 degree in general, but during certain time of the day, the fever become worse, such as if in the morning the patient will have 37.2 37 degree, but in the afternoon, the fever may go up to 38. And then in the evening, the, the fever reduced back to 37.3. So this in this situation, we also call it tidal fever. Tidal fever, it must happen for a few days. In one day, you can't say it's tidal fever because for, for one day, you won't be able to figure out the tide or the, the laws of the, the fever. So for this kind of fever, especially for a certain time, such as in the afternoon, between three to five o'clock, this is, is, we think that the tidal fever is due to Yang Ming Meridian, or due, the patient might have Constipation. So in this situation, sometimes we use the method of diarrhea to treat the kind of fever. If the, the patient presents fever in the afternoon only, and in the meantime, the patient has constipation. So for the treatment, we will use diarrhea method. Let's see why the patient can will present the fever in the afternoon only if due to Yang Ming Meridian. That's because the 
Do you still remember when we studied the meridian and collaterals in the basic theories? The, the meridian, the direction, the flow of a meridian is the circle. I told you that the circle have certain time relation, such as in the morning, 3 to 5 o'clock. That's the long meridian. And then when as the time goes to the afternoon, 3 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon, that's the yummy meridian of the stomach. That's why they will have fever. So in this situation, the struggle will be more severe at this at this time in the afternoon. That's why the, the patient may present slightly higher fever. The patient also may present the fever in the afternoon or in the evening. So previously I saw one patient also from flu, kind of flu, running nose, fever, and then that's actually one, one disease. So it's actually the, the second type of fever due to warm dampness. And after the treatments, after a few days, the patient presents night fever, which means, what does it mean by night fever? Every day, every night, the patient can have the body temperature of 37.2 to 37.3 plus in the morning. On seven o'clock, the body temperature reduced to thirty six point eight. In and it happens for quite a few days. So this this situation, what happens to the patient if the patient presents as this kind of manifestation during the day? The body temperature is normal, but at night. The patient will have mild fever. Then for this situation, we need to think about the tidal fever due to indeficiency. So this patient got indeficiency. So the in is not enough in the body. That's why during the day, the patient it doesn't present as fever. There's no fever during the day. But at night, because at night, the in qi the yin of the nature increase, the yang from the nature decrease, right? So our body will get the backup from the nature, the yin backup from the nature, which means at night, the yin qi or the yin pathogen in our body will be stronger than this yin can fight with the pathogen. So it's not the in pathogen, the in antipathogenic qi. So your healthy qi, also the defensive qi, also can separate into yin and yang, right? In this situation, the patient got a weak healthy qi, which means a weak yang qi and weak yin qi. And this weak yin qi at night can have the backup from the nature. So your healthy qi can fight with the pathogen more. That's why they can prevent, they can present mild fever at night. So there's a different type of fever. That's why when you, the patient says the, they got a fever and then you need to ask when was that? Is any time that the fever will, be, will become worse and how severe the fever is. That's all from the inquiry related to the fever and coldness. The last type of chills and fever is the alternating chills and fever. This kind, this kind of situation can present into two Paroxysms of chills and fever that reoccur at regular intervals. Paroxysms of chills and fever that reoccur 
and irregular intervals. So for this kind of situation, the patient presents as coldness or chills and fever alternating. For now, the patient may feel chills. chills. After a while, the patient may present as fever and then followed by chills again. So the, the fever and chills comes and goes in terms. Why in this situation, or how can we understand this, this kinds of manifestations? Well, this kind of manifestation, we actually analyze as the healthy qi and the pathogenic qi. They struggle, but when the healthy qi wins, then you can recover. That's why you can feel better or less fever if the pathogen qi fights. The pathogen qi wins, then the patient may present as fever. That's one explanation. The other explanation is once the struggle between these two qi is violent, the patient may present as fever. If it's not violent, the patient may present as normal or chills. The first one, parasitisms, that occur, reoccur at regular intervals. This describes the manifestation that the patient will have this kinds of symptoms, chills and fever, a certain time every day. The second one is reoccurs at irregular intervals and presents that the patient may have these kind of symptoms at any time. So what's the common situation for this kind of manifestation? There's one very typical disease, especially in African countries, malaria. Malaria, the patient may have a fever and, if, and don't feel cold. That's very typical symptoms of the alternating chills and fever. This also for the alternating chills and fever, in our theories, we also think that the, the pathogen stays in the in between of internal and external. So the pathogen didn't attack the internal, but the pathogen also not in superficial. So it's in between of the internal and superficial. That's the theories also we think in, in the Saoyang Meridian. So these are some of the situations regarding the chills and fever. And until now, you will understand that from coldness, the sensation of coldness and the sensation of hot, we need to distinguish, we need to ask in details if you ask the patient, do you feel hot? It's not enough for our diagnosis. And if they feel cold or hot, or if they present as fever, we need to ask, when do you feel? When do you, when, when did you take your body temperature? And then if you realize you got a fever, and also, do you feel any time, is there any time you feel better? or anytime you feel worse. That's the alternating chills and fever. So these are the discussion on the inquiry of coldness and heat, or cold, cold and hot. What's important from these two videos is that we need to understand the the medical terms in acupuncture, such as definition and manifestations of the these terms, such as aversion to cold. What does it mean by aversion to cold? 
muscular manifestation or the tidal fever what's the definition or what's the manifestation of tidal fever only you can uh, you remember the definition and manifestation of the, these terms when you see a patient presents with certain manifestations you will realize that this is what I learned from the diagnostics so the first the first thing that's for you to study is to understand the definition and manifestations the second is you need to think about what's the pathogenesis what's the me mechanism of the symptoms why the patient will have a volume to cold and mild fever why some patients will have sweating in certain situations why the patient will present with mild fever and fatigue so what's the relationship between these two symptoms then you will need to use the theories when we study privacy to explain the relationship and also to understand the knowledge behind these manifestations so for the discussion of coldness and heat we're going to stop here and in the next video we are going to talk about perspiration or sweating thank you guys